Hi again! Have you noticed that on some of the locomotives in the US, there are very slight differences in how the locomotives are designed, like extra lights or details on the roof? These are called specifications, and they are abundant in every railroad's locomotives. Since you all really enjoyed my previous video, I'll be continuing this unofficial series with another video explaining a lot of the common specifications railroads used on their locomotives, and what the meaning behind them all are. But before this video begins, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor. But this isn't just a regular mobile game nor subscription, this is specifically for you rail fans. Project Plymouth is a program started by my great friends in the Pacific Northwest, and they are trying to complete a feat unlike any other, restore a locomotive, and you yourself can help. Project Plymouth is run entirely from donations and is a non-profit program dedicated to restoring Plymouth ML63 locomotive nicknamed Dave. If you yourself want to contribute towards restoring and getting an actual, real locomotive up and running again, the link to the GoFundMe is in the description. Any amount helps and it will be put towards restoring Dave to operational condition. Consider checking it out, and now, on with the video. These are the most common form of specifications on modern day locomotives, and are mandated by the FRA. Ditch lights are an extra pair of two lights that rest on the pilot or walkway of a locomotive for extra visibility and safety by both the engineers and civilians. Passenger railroads are mandated by the FRA to have the ditch lights flash, but for freight railroads it's optional. Railroads on the eastern side of the US commonly have flashing ditch lights, while some on the west do not. Exceptions being some one-off units and various short lines, of course. Placed on the nose of earlier EMD standard cabs, these lights would alternate between three colors manually assigned by a lever on the outside of the light. Green, white, and red. Green for a scheduled train, white for an extra move, and red for marking the end of a train. These were phased out, but some locomotives still have them today. Here's a photo I took of a Jeep in Vancouver that kept them on. Rock lights came before ditch lights and were used by one railroad being BC Rail. Rock lights were an extra set of angled ditch lights on the pilot of a locomotive for extra visibility to aid in engineers from looking for fallen rocks on the tracks. Used by Canadian railroads or any railroad that runs through a snowy climate, these are placed over top of intake vents to prevent snow from gathering on it. Winterization hatches are an almost block-shaped cover placed over top of one cooling fan on a locomotive. The heat gathered from it is redirected into the engine bay to heat the engine in colder weather. The gyrolite is an oscillating headlight that has been around since the steam era. It's a light designed to get the attention of someone by oscillating around in a circular motion. From the front, it just looks like it's flashing, but that's not the case if you look at it from behind. The Mars light is almost exactly like a gyrolite, except instead of going in a circular motion, it does a figure 8 pattern, so it basically flashes faster from the front and oscillates around more. AC units are self-explanatory. It's your household air conditioning, but mounted on the roof of a train. Positive train control, or PTC, is mandated on all modern locomotives for Class 1 railroads or anything that runs on a Class 1's line. It is a giant set of antennas and radios that communicate with a satellite to ensure that a locomotive is running properly and to prevent accidents. It is a very vital part of modern railroading. Spark arresters are also self-explanatory. They are placed over top of locomotives, commonly switchers or GP38s, to prevent sparks from spreading out and starting potential line-side fires during extreme use. Used commonly on remote control equipment and yard switchers, these are an extra form of safety on locomotives to alert people that a locomotive is in use and switching with or without anyone occupying the cab. Rerailers are also self-explanatory. It's a piece of equipment that rerails a locomotive or car. Railroads used to mount them on the truck sets of locomotives but have since relocated them or outright removed them. Scotch light tape is a reflective tape that's placed on the pilot of locomotives to make them more visible at night. Yep, that's pretty much it. This is a unique one. Car track was actually the very first barcode to ever exist. It was used in the 1970s up until the late 80s to identify railcars through scanners for easier sorting in yards. It was later abandoned though as it was costly to maintain and has since been replaced with physical railcar tags. A gong bell is a railroad crossing bell modified for use on railroads that don't have much protective bells and equipment at their grade crossings. The idea was to have a bell that sounded similar to that of a grade crossing that alerted motorists and pedestrians. Since then it has become more obsolete as laws have become more strict on grade crossings. Horns are the most abundant type of specifications for railroads. There are hundreds of different types of horns that railroads have used, the most common being the Nathan K3LA, K5LA, and K5HL. 
commonly used by Conrail, these boxes were used to store spare knuckles for couplers in case they broke one. A lot of railroads now have them mounted on the pilots of their locomotives. Cab signal boxes were commonly used by Conrail's predecessor railroad, Penn Central. These boxes stored the equipment necessary for making their cab signal technology work. The E-Bell is a fully electronic bell which is cheaper to maintain and equally as loud as a regular bell. The earliest example of an E-Bell was made by Prime and used by the Milwaukee Road. As you can see, railroads used to, and still use, a diverse amount of specifications on their locomotives. And that's just all the lights, bells, and other various details that are mounted to them. There's also phase details on the locomotives which are for a later video. Thank you guys so much for the recent support, and there's a lot more to come, maybe even a video explaining all the stuff I'm going to do in the future? Thank you all for watching, and consider liking and subscribing to support me, or even donate to the Vancouver boys with their Project Plymouth to get a real locomotive up and running again. See you around!